Not yet. We can all agree that having a Geiger counter or a radiation detection device of some sort is a good idea for most people's preparedness inventory, but we don't often talk about exactly how you would use that device post a nuclear event. So we're going to dive into that today as well as talk about the Better Geiger, which is an American-made radiation detection device that's easy to use and is relatively affordable. So I want to go ahead and dive into that as well. But first and foremost, let's talk about what you would use devices like this for post a nuclear incident. So I'm going to have links down below to this as well as a promo code. So make sure you check that out. But the first reason you would use a Geiger counter or any other type of radiation detection device, because this is not actually a Geiger counter, is to figure out when you can go outside safely. You've been in your bunker or in your shelter or whatever you put together to save you from fallout. And you need to find out whether or not the radiation levels outside are safe enough for you and your family to evacuate or to even just go outside to do whatever work you need to start doing on your property when it comes to maybe repairing your home or trying to get food out of the garden or who knows what else. This is something that can tell you whether or not it's time. And that's a big deal because for a lot of people, They'll just go off of basic standard timelines of two weeks or however long, especially based on their location and how close they are to the nuclear event. And of course, they could be wasting time or they could be leaving too early, just depending on the scenario. So having one of these devices allows you to make a much more informed decision when it comes to risking your safety in that regard, okay? Now, another thing that would be very useful for one of these devices is to use it during travel post the event. So let's say that the event itself caused some sort of wildfire or something along those lines and you had to evacuate. This would help you decide on whether or not the places you're heading to are actually safe as well. Because maybe where you are is safe, but then while you're traveling, you can keep an eye on whether or not where you're going has higher radiation levels. And I think that's a very big concept to keep in mind, especially if you're in an urban environment, because if you have to evacuate, which is likely after one of these situations, you want to make sure that where you're going is relatively safe, right? Now, another thing you can use these for is surface contamination. You can find out if fallout has settled on things that you need to use, whether or not that's your vehicle, whether or not that's food, whether or not that's just anything you had outside during the event. Now you can find out if that surface contamination level is dangerous as well, and whether or not it's worth exposing yourself to, or if you need to decon whatever the device or item is that you're worried about. So this gives you a lot of information. And of course, the same can kind of be applied to food and water. If you want to make sure any food or water that you source after the event is relatively free of radiation, this can help you make that decision as well. So having a Geiger counter or a radiation detection device of some kind is a good idea because all those things are going to be very important during a post-nuclear event. Now, what we do want to talk about is also this Better Geiger, which was sent to me by the company. So full disclosure there, but I don't make any affiliate sales or anything like that off of these units. I just like the fact that this is an American made product that's relatively affordable compared to its competition, has better specifications in many ways, and is very simple to use. And I think that's the big one here, because look, not all of us are gonna be radioactive scientist freak shows that live in a laboratory, right? Not that all of you are freak shows, but I thought that was a little bit more dramatic and would catch more attention. However, okay, this thing is simple. I mean, you turn it on, it has the counts per minute, so you hear all the clicking that you wanna hear. You can also turn off that volume in case you're in a more dangerous environment and you don't wanna give away your position, but then you still have a visual meter as well as a graph that you can look at that tells you exactly how dangerous radiation levels are, including saying things like normal, high, or danger. So very basic concept, but it gives you all that information. So let's dive into this device just so you have some more information about it. And keep in mind that this is why this is a good thing to have in your inventory. You need to be able to travel. You need to be able to make sure outside is safe if you've been in your home or your shelter for an extended period of time. And you need to make sure that anything you source from outside doesn't have that surface contamination. So all those things are exactly why everyone should probably have a Geiger counter in their inventory. But this one in particular for its price point is a good deal. And let's talk about it. I do need to mention that the biggest supporter of the channel is Midway USA. So a big thank you to them for always helping me get better prepared. Make sure you check them out, especially for their Milserp gear. And then let's get back to the Better Geiger. So this is the Better Geiger radiation detector. And it's actually not a Geiger counter, but of course with the internet, you gotta have the word Geiger or nobody will know what you're talking about. So 
This doesn't have a Geiger tube in it, which is why it's not a Geiger counter, and it's just a radiation detector. And it uses a solid state scintillator instead of the Geiger tube, which basically means when radiation interacts with the scintillator, it produces tiny bursts of light that then can be measured in dose, which is what you're trying to keep aware of during any type of nuclear incident is how much of a radiation dose you're being exposed to over time, okay? so. First off, we'll go ahead and turn it on. And like I said, this is an American-made radiation detection device, and they're 150 bucks, and I'll leave a link down below, and if you use the code MAGIC, you can get either the waterproof case or some radioactive test material, which I have right here, for free with the detector. So either one is a good thing to have, but probably both isn't the worst idea because the radioactive material is how you can test this thing out. Now, what I like about this Geiger not counter, radiation detector, is that it is very simple and easy to use and very user friendly. It's very understandable, right? So it has a rubber case, which just helps to protect it. And it actually runs off of AA batteries and two alkaline AA batteries will make this thing last for over 40 hours, which is great. And actually has some use case here, which we'll talk about in a minute. But this is mode one, and this is probably the one you'll use the most. So what this does is it counts the micro sieverts per hour right here. It shows you a bar up here as to like how how high the radiation levels are. And then it just says normal, high, or danger, which is very obvious. You don't really have to be a scientist to figure out how this thing works. And now we have the radiation uh, test material right here, which we'll go ahead and throw right at the sensor, which is on the front here. And you can see that now the counts per minute, which is CPMs, which is basically the clicks you're hearing, are starting to pick up quite a bit. And eventually this can move the bar and the detector into the high range, which then you'd be able to make decisions based on personal risk, whether or not you want to venture out into a radioactive environment that's rating high on the scale, okay? Now you can also turn off the clicks, which is really nice in case you want to keep your footprint down and you don't want to give away any kind of a signature while you're traversing a dangerous area. Now no one has to know you're there figuring out whether or not the area is radioactive. So I do appreciate that quite a bit about it. And you can turn them back on, no problem at all. And then we have multiple modes. So this is mode one, which is probably the one you'll use the most. And then you have mode two, which actually measures in millirems per hour. Then you have mode three, which tells you your high counts per minute right there. You also have uh, an actual more detailed data-oriented graph here on mode four. But in reality, mode five is the next one you're gonna use the most compared to mode one. And what mode five does is it actually gives you an average of your dose or your measurements over a period of time. So since the device has been powered on, it's been on for 138 seconds, it says so far, 142 now. It tells you your average counts per minute, your average micro sieverts per hour. It just tells you all that data. So what you can do is actually turn this thing on and like leave it outside for a period of time and then go retrieve it later. And you can see all your averages when it comes to actually getting a full on environmental count of how exposed to radiation you would be if you go out into it, which is really good, which is why the batteries lasting 40 hours or more is a big deal because you can get these more accurate counts based on leaving it out in that environment, okay? now. One thing that's cool about this device is that it's not only user friendly, uh, but like I said, it's affordable and it's more, let's just say, uh, capable than some of the other competition that you find in places like Amazon and stuff in that same price range. For 150 bucks, you're gonna find a lot of other Geiger counters out there, but they use Cesium-137 as a control when it comes to calibrating the devices, and that can actually give you overestimations when it comes to the dosages, which means you might find yourself either not leaving when you had the ability to leave, which could be the difference of survival in a situation, or maybe you left too soon because you're just not getting as accurate of data as you could be getting. So this device does a better job of that and actually can detect up to 20 times higher levels of radiation than those other devices. So not only is it American made versus that Chinese stuff on Amazon, but it's got better capabilities, all right? And then X-ray and gamma rays, the higher the sensitivity they are, the longer the ranges that this device will pick them up. But because it has that extended amount of capability in the sense of detecting higher levels of radiation, it doesn't pick up really minimal radiation as quickly. So when it comes to things like uranium glass or stuff like that, where you wanna go to the antique shop and see if it's radioactive or not, this won't pick it up quite as easily as something else might. But that doesn't matter because what we're using it for isn't to find cool antiques at an antique shop, right? Now, of course, here's the thing. This is 150 bucks. It's user-friendly. It's not ultra 
data intensive or anything like that because if your job is like being a first responder or if you're somebody who works at like a nuclear plant or whatever, I don't know, and you need a Geiger counter in order to do your job appropriately, then you're gonna wanna get one of the more expensive style of Geiger counters. But this is for preppers. This is for people like myself who don't expose themselves to radiation on a regular basis and don't need something super complicated. I need something that says normal or high or low or danger or whatever, right? This doesn't say low, but I'm just gonna say that as something that I would like to see on just about anything related to radiation because none of us wanna actually deal with high levels of radiation, right? But all I'm trying to say is this is easy to use, it does the job, and it can accomplish everything we talked about earlier in the video about why we would need something like this in the first place. Can I go outside yet? Is where I'm going dangerous? And are the things that were outside during, let's just say a fallout situation, still covered with surface contamination? And this can give you all that information, no issue. So. I do like the better Geiger quite a bit. Big thanks to Robert for sending one of these over for me to check out. And honestly, I appreciate it because I like to support American companies and his certainly is one. So if you wanna check him out, make sure you check that link out down below. Don't forget that promo code MAGIC. If you need anything else from me, go to magicpepper.com. And besides that, that's gonna be it for Magic Prepper.